Hi guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the arpeggiator built into Logic. So if you're wondering, first things first is that it's over here under MIDI effects, and then arpeggiator, first one. So to use this, you use it on a MIDI track, and it'll essentially break down all the notes, and especially chords, to play them as an arpeggio. So it'll play the chords, but all the notes will be separate. So I'm just running this on a silent patch I've quickly put in, it sounds like this normally. And then with the arpeggiator on, it sounds like this. So it's playing the chord, but all the notes are being broken up. Now we have the main important parameters on this front page here. So we have the rate, and you'll be able to hear what that does when I start to move it. So this just determines how fast or slow it will arpeggiate. So I'm just going to leave it on 16 for these examples. Next we have the note order. So as it stands, we're starting with the lowest note and it's working its way up to the highest note and then coming back down again. However, if I were to choose this one, it would do the opposite. So it would start with the highest note and work its way to the lowest one and then back again. And then this one, it will start on the lowest, go all the way to the top and then it will play the notes going back down and then up again. This one will offset it, so each time it will start on a different note when a new one starts. This one is random, so it will shuffle each note, playing them in a random order each time. Uh, and this one will play them in whatever order you have played them in on. So this is really useful for when you're playing them in on like a MIDI keyboard. You can play each note in a very specific order, and it will play it back. And next we have variation, so you'll hear the differences while I just start running through these. So, normal, then starting on a different note, starts on a different note again, and again. So it's good just to mess around with these and see if there are any cool ones in there that work for what you've got. Last along this line is octave range, and this one's a lot of fun actually. At the moment we're just covering one octave in the notes we have selected. Uh, but we're going to increase that, so it's going to double all of these if we set it to two. So we're going to be playing over two octaves. Then three octaves. And then four octaves. Now down at the bottom here we have grid. And this is where you can put in your own really interesting rhythms and patterns to create a very unique arpeggiator sound for you. So if we click these numbers along the bottom, it'll start to bring in notes that will be played. So if I hit play now, you'll see it running through all of them. Now if I start to take some of these out, it'll start to create a cool rhythm. Now I'm just going to extend this to 16 because we are at a 16th rate and it'll make sense just for this uh, demonstration. And we're just going to put in a cool rhythm to last this pattern. See how it sounds. Now to make it more interesting, we can actually shorten and lengthen some of these notes. So if we click and drag these blue bits here, we can make them sound really snappy, or we can even extend them, make them sound longer. Shorten some of these as well. And another cool thing we can do is if we click these notes down here, it'll actually play the full chord. It won't arpeggiate it, it'll play the full one. So this is where you can experiment and really get creative with your own arpeggiator. Just going to go back to live and have it back to normal, and we're going to go over to option. So here we have note length, quite self-explanatory, so as it stands it's on 90%, but if we shorten it, it'll make them all short and snappy, lengthen it, and it kind of overrun. So I'll just bring that back. Uh, random will randomize the note length, so it will set the value to anything between what I've set it to and 1%. Next is velocity, very similar for that, except this synth isn't actually velocity sensitive at the moment, but it will just either play the notes as if they are played here, or to a percentage of what you've chosen. And again, random function here, same as it was with the note length. Next we have swing, and this is quite cool actually, so... Gives it quite a nice groove to it, if you're into that. And then we've just got the cycle length over here. Uh, next is keyboard, and this you can just see what notes are being played. 
I don't really need this as I've got my MIDI keyboard set up and then controller, but I'm not using any of this, so I won't demonstrate it. And lastly is latch. So if I hit latch now and I hit play, then I stop it, it's still playing. And if I play in a different note, it'll transpose it to that note. Next we have gated transpose, and this will turn off once it falls below its threshold. So if I hit play and stop it, it carries on for a little bit, but then falls off once it's fallen down. Also, if I hit play, you'll start to see that the notes in the next chord will get added in, which can be quite cool. Next we have add, and this one, I really like this one actually. So if I hit play, stop it again, I can hit a note and it'll put it in. So you can get some quite cool sounds going on here. And we've got add temporarily. So if I hit play again, I need to hold down the note because if I let go, it gets rid of it. So I hold all these down, let go. And next we have through. So if I turn that on and I hit play, I'll be able to play normally underneath it. as though the arpeggiator isn't even on. So this is a really cool tool that you can use. It's already built into Logic to create your own arpeggiators, and you can get some really interesting sounds out of it, so it's really worth playing around with. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.